Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. It's Aaron from the Class Horror Cast or First Class Horror. So this is the first episode of something I'm going to trial here on the podcast. Each week I'm going to add a mini episode, which will be titled something like Horror News or something like that. And what I will do is I won't be covering absolutely every story that has come out in horror. And I won't even necessarily be covering all the big ones either. I'm just going to hand pick maybe between 5 and 10 every week stories. And we're going to have a read through the article as we're going to talk about different things. And I'll just give some of my opinions. And uh, we'll just see how it grows from there. Uh, I would appreciate any feedback you can give, good and bad, on how I can change, improve, what you would like to see added maybe, taken away. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of build on it from there and see what happens. So we're going to start off this week. I have five articles, I think, in total. And these four of these were gotten from bloodydisgusting.com. So you guys can go over there and check them out for all your horror news and make sure and support them. And then the fifth article is from variety.com. So let's get straight into it then. So the first one is the news that the Sons of Anarchy creator, Kurt Sutter, will be teaming up with Netflix and Blumhouse to bring a movie out called This Beast. So, Deadline broke the news earlier this week that Sutter will write, direct and produce this movie, which is inspired by, I think, a a real story of the Beast of... I'm not even going to try and pronounce it because I'll butcher it. It's a French French, um, village. And apparently they were terrorised in the 1760s by these strange uh, beasts, I guess, that were said to have um, extremely sharp teeth and uh, long tails and stuff like that. They there was there was a lot of things that went on, as far as I know. Um, uh, these attacks occurred between 1764 and 1767-ish, I think. Um, the attacks, which covered an area spanning. 90 by 80 kilometers which is 56 by 50 miles were said to have been committed by one or more beasts with formidable teeth and immense tails according to contemporary witnesses most descriptions of this period identified the beast as a wolf dog or wolf dog hybrid victims were often killed by having their throats torn out the kingdom of france used considerable amount of money and manpower to hunt the animals responsible including the resources of several nobles, soldiers, royal huntsmen and civilians. The number of victims differs according to the source. In 1987, study estimated there had been 610 attacks, resulting in 500 deaths, 49 injuries, and 98 of the victims that were killed were partly eaten. Other sources claimed that the animal or animals killed between 60 and 100 adults and children and injured more than 30. The beast was reported killed several times before the attack finally stopped. This seems like a really interesting thing. Um, I a lot of things come together here that I like. I mean, I I'm a huge fan of Kurt Sutter, a huge fan of Son, Sons of Anarchy, huge fan of Netflix, huge fan of Blumhouse. So this and this story sounds kind of interesting, and he seems pretty excited about it. Um, he was quoted as saying bringing my disturbing story sensibility into the Blumhouse world just seemed like something that had to happen, Sutter said. And this beast is the perfect project for that marriage. And Netflix is the perfect venue for that bloody ceremony. So Jason Blum will be producing for Blumhouse along with Carla Hacken for Paper Pictures. So that's our first bit of news today. Um, I would definitely love to hear from you guys on Instagram. Um, You can find me at First Class Horror. What you think. If this is something that'll be up your alley you think it's going to be good bad or you just don't give a shit about it whichever um but definitely let me know so moving on from there we have some really cool announcement actually uh, and one of my favorite ones of this week's show it's the silent night deadly night slasher franchise that's coming back to life so the 1984 holiday horror classic silent night deadly night Controversial at the time of release due to its depiction of an axe-wielding killer dressed as Santa Claus, which spawned four sequels and more recently remade back in 2012. This week we've learned that the ongoing EFM, that a brand spanking new reboot of the slasher franchise, is currently in development. Deadline reports that the new take on the franchise is coming courtesy of 
Orwo Studios and Black Hanger Studios, which sounds quite interesting. Um, Scott Schneid and Dennis Whitehead, who produced the original, are back on board as producers for Wonder Wheel Entertainment, along with producer Anthony Massey of Massey Media. So that sounds interesting. What else have we got here? Um, in a statement shared by Deadline, the continued desire for horror content and the ongoing success of the genre meant it was the perfect time to be able to offer up this chilling revival of the iconic title. The original Silent Night, Deadly Night was directed by Charles E. Sellier, starring Robert Brian Wilson as Billy, who witnessed his parents get murdered by a killer dressed as Santa when he was a kid. All grown up, Billy puts the Santa suit on and goes on a killing spree of his own. The So Bad It's Good sequel followed Ricky, the younger brother of Billy. As for the sequels, they increasingly had very little to do with the original storyline, or even the Christmas holiday at all. With part 3 starring Bill Mosley as Ricky, part 4 centred on a cult of witches, and part 5 starring Mickey Rooney, who famously trashed the original Silent Night, Deadly Night, as an evil toy maker responsible for a series of gruesome deaths. The 2012 version of the original movie was simply titled Silent Night, directed by Stephen C. Miller and mostly telling its own story altogether about a killer dressed up as Santa. No word yet on the approach for this reboot or the creative team involved. So we've just got to stay tuned, guys, for that one. Um, Really interesting. Can't wait to see it. I hope they try and do something a little bit different, though. Um, I just don't don't know how I feel about just seeing another rehash. I actually quite enjoyed the 2012 movie. Um, I mean, it's 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 not it, it's not an award-winning movie by any means, but it's definitely fun. Um, I really did enjoy it, so it, it'll be cool to see what they what they put together for this one. So up next, we have some Goosebumps news, which I wanted to include because I'm a huge Goosebumps fan, always have been. Um, still have some of the books from the '90s. I remember one of my favorite ones would have been. Um, something Return or Escape from Batwing Hall I think was the name of it there was that one and there was another one that used to really freak me out Camp Jelly Jam I can't remember the exact name of it it had this freaky guy on the cover with this big Cheshire cat kind of smile Um, yeah that one I think that one freaked me out more than any of them but um, yeah we've got some Goosebumps news so R.L. Stein updates on the new Goosebumps live-action TV series that now has a director. After two movies that finally brought the franchise to the big screen, it was announced just about a year ago that a brand new live-action Goosebumps reboot series based on R.L. Stein's best-selling books is in the works for the small screen. So, Sony Pictures to develop the series. So what's the latest? Answering fan questions on Twitter last night, R.L. Stein himself shared a tiny bit of an update on the project. In short, it sounds like it's coming along nicely. So we have the tweet from RL which says, We have a producer and a director signed on for the new Goosebumps TV series. And he also added more news to come soon. As far as the Goosebumps books are concerned, Stein is still hard at work on writing new terror tales for kids of today. In fact, during the same Twitter Q&A, he revealed that he's just signed a contract to write six more Goosebumps books, while also noting that the next one is being re- that's being released is inspired by zombie movies and is titled Fifth Grade Zombies. So that sounds like... It's crazy to me that this guy is still so passionate and still... I mean, he's made so much money. He's so famous. The books are so famous. They'll live on in history regardless. And he just continues to try and keep this thing relevant and reintroduce it to new audiences, which I think is fantastic, to be honest. Uh, And as a huge Goosebumps fan, it's uh, I'll take anything Goosebumps that I can get, to be honest. Uh, Also, a little bit of news, the cast for Don Mancini's Chucky TV series. Um, There was some more news on that. So, uh, after delays caused by the pandemic it looks like Don Mancini's Chucky series for USA and sci-fi is getting ready to begin production and Collider brings us some casting news according to Jeff Schneider Devon Sawa from Final Destination and Hunter x Hunter has landed a major role in the series noting that he's actually playing a set of twins the cast will also include Zachary Arter um, 
and Theo Brionis Brion from Mancini and and the creator of Channel Zero Chucky is expected to arrive later this year with Brad Dorf voicing Chucky and Jennifer Tilly also on board as Tiffany Chucky has been described as a fresh take on the franchise that will explore Chucky's character with a depth that is uniquely afforded by the TV series format. After a vintage Chucky doll turns up at a suburban yard sale, an idyllic American town is thrown into chaos as a series of horrifying murders begin to expose the town and its secrets. Meanwhile, the arrival of enemies and allies from Chucky's past threaten to expose the truth behind the killings as well as the demon doll's untold origins, as a seemingly ordinary child who somehow became this notorious monster. So that that seems quite interesting. We have some more, I think, words here from Mancini as well. So let's see. With this TV show, our mission has been to preserve the straightforward scariness of the original film or first couple of films, Mancini explained to Sci-Fi Wire last May but at the same time continue on with this ever-expanding tapestry of consistent story that we've spun over the course of seven movies and some 30 years. I think fans are really going to love to see the new characters that we introduce into this realm, and just to see how they come how they come off on our classic characters, not just Chucky, but some of the others that you may be hoping to see. There's a good chance they may turn up. Mancini also teased in this chat with Sci-Fi, I think the prospect of seeing Chucky sharpen his skills and add to his toolbox some of the technical goodies that we have at our disposal now. That's something I think people will find pretty interesting. It's so important to give Chucky new weapons, new strategies and new targets and new goals. Chucky has a different goal in the TV show than he's ever had before and it's specifically something that is designed to evoke something that's going to be in the zeitgeist today. So that's that sounds really interesting and it sounds like they've put a lot of thought into that which is something that I love uh, I love the idea that this isn't just going to be a rehash or and I and I do feel with Mancini being the original creator um, uh, this is not a, a cash grab it's not going to be something you know that they've just put together to make a few bucks off the name and whatever I do feel like he's going to try live up to to what Chucky is like I mean he's an icon of horror um, and I, I think it's good and it's cool that they've gotten this opportunity and uh, I, I I, for one am completely for it I know a lot of people have given it a lot of shit but I think it's a, I think it's a really good thing and the final piece of news that I've chosen for this week is some Jeepers Creepers news so we are getting another Jeepers Creepers movie um, this year apparently so the Creeper is back and looking for blood. Jeepers Creepers Reborn, the fourth installment in a long-running horror franchise, has sold worldwide distribution rights to screen media. The studio plans to release the film in North America in the fall of 2021. Screen Media previously released Jeepers Creepers 3, which we won't talk about. The latest installment in the series has a new director, who previously oversaw the Iron Sky films, it is part of a new planned trilogy. The film is written by Sean Michael Argo and produced by Jake Seal um, of Orwa Studios and Black Hanger Studios. Uh, let's see. Seth Neal, Screen Media's SVP of Global Acquisitions and Co-Productions is executive producing on behalf of the company. So here's the logline. The film unfolds as the Horror Hounds Festival holds its first ever event in Louisiana, where it attracts hundreds of geeks, freaks and die-hard horror fans from far and wide. Among them is fanboy Chase and his girlfriend Lane, who is supposed to come along for the ride. But as the event approaches, Lane begins to experience unexplained premonitions and disturbing visions associated with the town's past, and in particular the local legend or urban myth, The Creeper. As the festival arrives and the blood-soaked entertainment builds to a frenzy, Lane believes that something unearthly has been summoned and that she is at the centre of it. Jeepers Creepers Reborn was shot at Orwo Studios and Black Hanger Studios and on location in Jackson, Louisiana in December and January. Okay, so this thing has already been shot and is done. It is currently in post-production. Screen Media's creative 
executive Connor McAdam is serving as associate producer. As excited as we are, we know that the fans will be even more thrilled and chilled to return to the world of the Creeper, now with a much scarier vision from the new director, who is a perfect fit to restart this franchise. The deal was negotiated by Needle for Screen Media with Seal on behalf of the production. Also serving as executive producers are Jamie R. Thompson, Terry Bird, Danny Zamost, Lee Broda, uh, Gary Raskin, like we've so many people here executive producing, which seems a bit odd, but uh, Screen Media's recent acquisition includes the comedies Senior Moment and Off the Rails, as well as the Nicolas Cage film, Willy's Wonderland. Hmm, that's quite interesting. I see a lot of people talking about that lately. And um, this is going to be interesting to see. I don't have any high hopes. I don't know how this will go. Uh, I'm a huge Jeepers Creepers fan. Even number two I like. One is one of my favourite movies, but number two I actually even still enjoy. While it's a little bit more tacky and it's not as good, I still enjoy it. Number three I passed on from when it came out, and I actually only watched it several months ago, and um, I thought it was awful. It had no redeeming quality whatsoever. And I just really didn't like it. And I know a lot of people don't like to support Victor Salva. So it's quite interesting as well to see him be bumped. I would imagine it had something to do with some of the news that's come out about him. And the fact that that movie flopped as well. I just think that it's time to... There's a lot of life left in Jeepers Creepers, I feel. Because it's had barely any movies. So it it does have a lot of life, in my opinion. But uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But, um... Like I said, guys, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. This is going to be like a 20-minute long episode to start with. This may get longer, shorter, I'm not sure. Um, Obviously, if we have heavy weeks of news and I feel like I want to cover more, I will pick more articles to read out and talk about. As I said, these articles were taken from Variety.com and BloodyDiscussing.com, so make sure you go and support those guys. Check out your news there. Um, As always, you can find me on Instagram at FirstClassHorror. That's where I'm most active, but you can find me on all other social media under First Class Horror as well. I've also got a website up and running now, which is www.classhorrorcast.com. You can go there, you can sign up with your email, get notified every time I release an episode. You can get all my episodes on there, and I am going to have a blog there as well. I currently have some blog posts on there. Um, It's things like equipment, you know, um, some tips for starting podcasting and different things not that I claim to be an expert but just things that helped me um, other than that you can support me on Patreon um, you can support me on Teespring I have some merch, I have some cool shirts on Teespring and other than that just interact with me guys that's all I'm doing as far as just to build a community so any feedback like I said before good and bad is all welcome anything that you would like to see me do, improve, change please let me know As always, give me a review or a rating on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, I'll see you for next week's show, I guess. Hope everyone is safe and well. And um, goodbye.